Libra, hello there, my beautiful friends. We're going to do your general tarot reading for early October 2023. Thank you so much for joining me today. You know I appreciate each and every single one of you. So let's get right down to business, as always, and start you off with an oracle card here, just so we could dip our toes into energy and see what's going on for the lovely Libra Collective in Libra season, might I add. Let's get it going, my guides. What do we have here for the fabulous Libras in early October? And yeah, we're just going to take a real quick look at this first card. Then we'll get into the full reading itself. And at the very end, I'll pull you a bonus card from the Shadowland Tarot just to see what might be in the shadows or what shadow work you can lean in on, which is always interesting. But let's get it going here. Let's rock and see what we got for Libra. And while we get this first card out, I would just like to extend and wish you all a very happy birthday from me to you since it is Libra season. So whether it's coming up, whether it's already passed, I hope you have a great one. I hope you get everything you want and need for your birthday. Let's get it going here, my guys. Talk to me. And the card, the first card's being very specific here, my friends. If you're not, if you're new here, I only do these little shuffles and usually they pop out real quick. Okay, yeah. Here's more of this water sign energy that I've been seeing a lot around air signs in recent weeks. Very dreamy, very thought-based. You could have an extremely active mind in this time, which could be a good thing, but it can also be a little bit challenging when I see this card in front. So we'll break all that down. Before we do, though, if you're new here, I'll be speaking about the October subscriber surprise towards the end, so you might want to check that out. Also, if you could kindly illuminate that like button by tapping it right on its third eye, you know, I'd greatly appreciate it. But let's get into the reading. Enough of the promo. Let's talk about this card. So I love when this comes out normally because you see the beautiful etheric background. We got the hot air balloons, all sorts of nonsensical things happening. So to me, this is very mentally tuned in and mental based. It's all about what's going on in the mind. Now, this can represent dreams for a lot of Libras in this time. You might be having very interesting or odd dreams even. I don't want to say nightmares, but when this card that can represent one's dream state. But if we're not talking about that, it's very active mentally. Now, this could be advice from spirit, really asking you to be creative. If you have a lot going on in the mind, get it out some way, whether it's writing, whether it's doing art, make a sculpture, make a painting, whatever you might do to just move that energy out of your brain into the physical world. Because keeping it trapped up in your mind, overthinking or thinking too much could really bring on some like stress or anxiety. So just watch for overthinking in this time. And put that down right there. I'm going to get into tarot now. I always say that first card, it doesn't make or break the reading. It's just a footnote. So let's get you three cards in the upright. Then we'll get into the intuitive juiciness here. So let's shuffle it up one time, see what we got for the Libras. And while we get this deck ready, let's talk about last week's reading. And it was looking pretty good, my friends. The reading was titled A Golden Opportunity. So for a lot of Libras, that could still bleed through to this week. Might have some sort of big opportunity coming in for you where if you don't take the opportunity, it could wither on the vine in one way or another. But it felt really nice last week. So let's see what's popping this week. As you know, energy is very fluid, never set in stone. So only take this how it hits for you. Because we could be seeing your vibe. We could be seeing the vibe of someone you're connected to as well. Tarot's like that. So let's get you three cards. It's been pretty back and forth in recent weeks. I'll say that like where one week we have some challenge. One week seems much better. So let's get you three cards. Thank you. Okay, so th this is where we're starting, huh, Libra? We have the Five of Pentacles. Hmm. Okay, we're just going to put that down right there. We're not going to make too many snap judgments on what that could be. Let's get you two more. That could be loneliness. That could be issues monetarily. That could be a lot of things. Yeah, now we have a little bit of mystery, some possible confusion. Okay, possible second guessing when we have the Two of Swords. Let's get you one more. Yeah, you're going to want to keep your mind busy in this time. I already feel that. Okay. Yeah. Conflicted. We have the five of wands right here on the back end. So this is going to be an interesting one. We have repeating fives and I'll go into the numerology a little further in a moment, but let's go through. I'll give you some of the classical meanings and archetypes and we'll get into that juicy intuitive stuff. So at first look, first glance, I noticed that we have an interesting mixture of elements. We got earth, we got air, we have fire. So we do have a mix of external and internal energies happening whether it's multiple different situations or just one, we want to see how all this plays together. But the fact that we are being anchored down by fives on the ends, generally fives in numerology represent like very quick, sudden change. 
it's similar like a tower. So it could be things that shake things up or shocks or things like that. But let's go through one by one and really piece this together. Position number one, we have the Five of Pentacles. So there could be some warnings here with this, but there could be positives as well. The Five of Pentacles could be feelings of loneliness. Sometimes this could represent somebody feeling like abandoned or left out in the cold or left behind in, in one way or another. But it could just represent some sort of feeling of solitude, whether you're enjoying it or whether you're not. I see this card, I think of solitude. Please beware of money issues when this card shows up. So overspending, spending too lavishly. This card is a big warning about financial things. So we'll see what's up as we move through the reading. The Five of Pentacles to me does have a very good positive though, because this is not permanent. It's, none of these energies are permanent. The Five of Pentacles could represent somebody who is on a journey of some kind. Like, yeah, this could be a tough area of a journey, a journey to like the next chapter. So it doesn't have to be a rough one. But as we move to the center, we have the Two of Swords here in the upright. When I see the Two of Swords, it is one of my big cards of mystery, the unknown, the unexpected, the surprising. So when I see it flanked by double fives, like there's a lot of unknowns here, okay? There could be shocks. Like I said, this is tower-like type of energy. So beware of towers in this time. We'll, we'll see when we get down to the clarifying. Now into when in tarot, twos represent decisions, choices, do I go left? Do I go right? Do I do this? Do I do that? Did I make the right choice? Did I make the right decision? That's a big thing here. So there could be like some second guessing going on. This card could represent confusion. So there might be someone you're linked to, like they're feeling confused by something or how something's elapsed. We could be looking at some problematic things or some situations here that we're going to want to look at further for sure. But I always say with the two swords, it is one of my bigger cards right up there with the moon about mystery about the unexpected things that come out of left field. Now, as we move to the back end, we have the other five. We have the five of wands. And you don't have to be an expert in tarot to really get the drift of what the five of wands could be representing when we have five individuals here beating the living crap out of each other with sticks, right? So this could represent conflict, whether it's an internal conflict or an external conflict. And with what I've been seeing, especially next to the Two of Swords, the mystery, like this could be a lot of internal conflict in this time, whether you or somebody else, like they could really be going through it here. But this is also a very good card too of determination. So whereas, yeah, we do have like some unknowns, we do have uncomfortable energy showing up here this week, Libra. This can also represent the path forward may not be easy, but it might be worth it in one form or another. Because like it definitely doesn't feel like an easy one. When I see the five of wands, it's somebody who's like, all right, I'm going to get through all the tests that I have to get through. If this is a test, I'm going to ace it with flying colors. If this is a rough patch, I'm going to get through it. So like this is spirit really asking you to like be determined or stay in something for the long haul. So the way it all mixes together, there is a lot of mystery at play here. And I want to dive deeper on all of it, Libra. Let's jump in and clarify. All right, let's get a good shuffle here for my Libras, please. Guides and spirit team. And yes, my friends, this is where I go intuitive with the message, which means I just tell you how it feels to me. So feel free to do further research or rely on your base knowledge of tarot, because as you know, every single reading is about the reader's interpretation, and I'm just giving you mine. Let's go in on that Five of Pentacles. And yes, if you're a reader yourself, please feel free to play along. That's why the box is here. If you're feeling any messages you want to give to Libra, drop it in the comments. I don't mind at all. All right. Why is that Five of Pentacles here? Thank you. Ten of Pentacles in reverse. Yeah, someone might feel like there's been a rug pulled in one form or another. I would say watch out for um, issues in regards to family. Watch out for issues in regards to the household. Obviously money when we have the Ten of Pentacles in reverse. Just like, please be on top of your finances. Don't spend loosey-goosey in this time unless you can afford it. That's something Spirit could be warning about here. So this could be a big financial warning we're picking up up front. But when I see this Ten of Pentacles, generally this is a very grounded, stable type of card. If we're not talking about work and family and stuff like I already mentioned, when this card shows up in the reverse, this could sometimes represent loss or feeling like the rug's been pulled. We're still picking up this tower-like type of energy. So I would say use quite a bit of caution in the coming days and weeks, Libra, okay? 
and specifically monetarily right here. And we also have mental showing up. We have like initiative as well. So there might be multiple warnings here, but for a lot of you, I would heed this one in the very beginning. If not, we could just be looking at like a situation that somebody deems as shocking, like it kind of shocked them, like they didn't see it coming. Similar to the tower. I've been feeling this underlying tower energy throughout. So let's keep moving. Let's just keep pressing forward. I really don't want to get too hung up here and get down into more nitty gritty detail. But take the warnings that I presented, if you will. So let's see why that two of swords is in the mix. I want to see what's up with this possible hidden energy, this unexpected energy. So why is the two of swords here? We're getting a totally different vibe than we had last week, that's for sure. Where we were looking at opportunities and possible good things coming in. Now we're getting like warning said spirits plopping in so let's see why that two of swords is here thank you nine of cups in reverse okay yeah to me this is representative of somebody feeling like something might be a mistake okay either the way they acted what they decided like did i do the right thing there's this big second guessing type of energy so i would absolutely say in this time like beware of mistakes where somebody might feel like they've made a big mistake. Obviously not you. This could be someone you're linked to. But the Nine of Cups in the upright is generally a card of wish fulfillment. Being happy, being welcoming. You see how content this person is. They feel warm and loving. In reverse, it's like, okay, what happened? Like, I'm still getting this shocking tower type of energy. Like, what the hell happened here? Okay, like, how did it happen like this? So... It's just all over the reading, and once again, I feel with the confusion and the stuff we have with the Two of Swords, either somebody feels like they've made a mistake, and whether it's you or somebody else, like there's someone's like, yeah, I don't, I don't know if that was the right move, or I don't think that was the right choice or decision. There could be a lot of second guessing happening. Let's keep pressing forward. Once again, I don't want to get caught up here, but we do have two possible warnings here. One, watch out for the finances. Two, watch out for mishaps and mistakes, misjudgments. Let's see why the Five of Wands is here. Then we'll do a recap before we get into the Shadow card. Because I feel like it's coming through straightforward, Libra. And you know me, I'm not a doom and gloom type of reader. I don't like to fear monger or anything like that. But when a message comes through, I'm going to give it to you straight. Okay, so let's see why that Five of Wands is here. Before we do our little recap. I mean, you had a warning a couple of weeks ago as well. But this one seems a little more urgent. Thank you. Yeah, Nine of Swords. Someone's stressing, someone's stressing. And I remember back to the Oracle card we had in the very beginning. Remember I was talking about dreams. I was talking about sleep, all that stuff here. This is another card that represents the sleep realms, dreaming, stuff like that. We're mixing the fire and air here on the back end. So that could be very volatile. The Nine of Swords, once again, these are very straightforward on the back with the Five of Wands. Now the Nine of Swords, you do not have to be an expert in tarot to know what this represents. You see that person, they are stressing, they are anxious, they are losing sleep for whatever reason. So when I see it underneath this Five of Wands, there is somebody fighting some sort of internal battle. Whether they are nervous, whether they are stressing, like, or are they nervous? Like, oh, will it ever go back to the way it was? Or whatever it might be, like, there's a lot of intensity here i'm feeling a lot of mental and energetic intensity on this back end now another thing i will say the nine of swords this isn't an energy i would want to wish on anyone specifically in their birthday season this is one of my cards of the paranormal so a lot of you might be more sensitive to energies in this time unseen energies and stuff like that but under this five of wands there is somebody fighting some sort of big internal conflict that might be a bit of a mess Okay, I'll just say it like that. I don't want to sound like too ratchet or anything like that, but there might be somebody that's a bit of a mess within. Okay, not saying it's you, but when I see the Five of Wands, Nine of Swords, could, could it represent bad dreams and nightmares? Sure, but to me, it just feels like someone like fighting one within. Okay, so let's go through and do a quick recap. I feel like we do have some warnings here that we should heed, that we should take seriously in the coming days and weeks, but in position number one, we have the Five of Pentacles with the Ten of Pentacles in reverse. This to me was a huge warning about finances, about money. Make sure you're not overspending or anything like that. But this to me kind of felt like a little bit of a rug pull type of energy. I was picking up tower-like type of energy. So watch out for like shocking situations in this time. I would take this as a warning for sure. 
because someone's sense of stability could be shaken in one way or another. Moving to the center, we have the Two of Swords with the Nine of Cups in reverse. Now here comes the energy of someone feeling like, all right, well, maybe that was a mishap or maybe that was a mistake. Did I make the right choice? Did I make the wrong choice? Like it is that back and forth juggling within the mind and it bleeds over when we move into the back end. But there's confusion. There's a lot of unknowns here and it's not the nicest energy specifically in your birthday season. Once again, though, this isn't permanent. This is energy that can be worked through. But on the back end, we have the five of wands with the nine of swords in the upright. Someone fighting some sort of internal battle. I did say that someone felt a little bit messy. They felt like a mess here. Okay, so whether it's anxiety, whether it's nervousness, somebody going through some sort of internal battle on the back end. So it's like we kind of have all our bases covered where spirit might be saying it's a very sensitive time heed these warnings and move slowly in this time. That's a big vibe we're picking up. But please take a screenshot if you want to look into that further. Let's get you a shadow card here, Libra. Interesting the way the elements mix too. Like, look, we got two earth, we got two air, we got one water, one fire. So we have a lot of different elements in the mix. And it's that perfect mix of internal and external. That's the one thing that gives me a little bit of pause because it seems like there's stuff going on internally, but also externally. So let's, let's shuffle it up and get you a shadow card now. And I always like to pull this shadow card at the very end. I feel like it's a nice thing to do. It's very introspective, whether it's something within us, whether it's something we don't quite see. Maybe it'll give us more detail about this Two of Swords. I always like to pull a shadow card. So let's get you one to top this reading off. And if you've made it this far in the reading, please feel free to check out channel memberships. I'll put a link to it down in the comments, my friends. Obviously, no pressure, but for this first month of channel memberships, I'll be doing a personal spread for anyone that signs up. So there's a couple weeks left for that, but obviously no pressure. Let's get you a, sh a shadow card now. Just feel like I have to mention it. All right, we do have the Fool card here showing up in the shadows. In this deck, it is called the Seeker, but this is the Fool. So a portion of you could be having issues with an Aries in this time. Um, I would step lightly with any Aries in this time, that's for sure. But the Fool is all about starting new journeys, okay? Someone could be having cold feet. Um, and we were seeing it within the reading itself, like about like cold feet, did I make the right move, make the right choice? Um, the Fool to me is usually very positive and it's about starting new cycles, but there's also warnings here about doing anything that's too spontaneous. So in the coming days and weeks, it's very important for a lot of the Libras not to do things too spontaneous or off the off the cuff when we have this full card. But like I said, some of you might just have a connection with an Aries that is attached for whatever reason showing up here in the shadows, but just watch out for any spontaneity, especially when we saw mistakes showing up in the spread itself. If you are moving into a new cycle, try to bring as much happiness and optimism as you can. That's what the fool asks us to do. So Libra, that's what I have for you this week. Don't click away just yet though. I'm going to give you the details. The October subscriber surprise. If you got your name in for the September subscriber surprise, the winners will be announced after this week's fire and air readings. But for October, I'll be going back to one of the classics. I'll be giving away two copies of the Everyday Witches Tarot. It's one of the most beautiful decks out there. So if you'd like to get your name in for this, it's two simple things as always, my friends. First, you must be subscribed. Second, let me know down in the comments if there's a zodiac sign that you clash with. If so, which signs do you kind of bump heads with? You'll be entered to win, and at the end of October, your name will be announced in the community tab. My friends, as always, much love, and I'll see you next time.